Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com. There's a tremendous difference between the way that we view unsound doctrine, false teaching, and our brothers and sisters in Christ who are innocent, who have had their hearts deceived by those who teach it. That's the first thing I want to emphasize uh, right up front at the beginning of this video. Romans chapter 16, verse 18, and I know that we're jumping ahead just a bit. For those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by smooth words and flattering speech, deceive the hearts of the simple. The word belly there in the text denotes the innermost part of a man, the soul, the heart, you know, as the seed of, of thought, feeling, and desire. The word simple uh, is literally the word innocent, naive, not harmful. It describes someone who's innocent down to their very intentions, down to their very motives. It's a person without any desire whatsoever to cause any harm, to hurt or cause harm. So I'm going to say that again. There is a tremendous difference between the way that we view unsound doctrine or some institution that promotes it and our brothers and sisters in Christ who are trapped within it. Now, 2 Timothy 2, 23, but, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes, and the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God will grant them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves, that is, uh, they might come to their senses, is really what the word means in the original text, to regain one's senses out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive, and that, and that taken captive is, is captured alive, and the word snare in the Greek is a word that means to set a trap. It, properly, it means a trap set for animals. Uh, in the figurative sense, it's a moral snare that robs someone of their spiritual liberties which the Lord wishes to give. And I want to say that again. The snare in that text of 2 Timothy 2 is a moral snare that the devil has set that robs a Christian of their spiritual liberties which the Lord wishes to give. Okay? And there's, for a, a, I can't emphasize this again enough, there's a huge difference between the way that we view false teaching and our brothers and sisters in Christ who have had their hearts deceived by it, okay? I've, oftentimes in the past, I've, I've come down pretty hard on false teachers, whereas those who are the victims of it, I don't come down so hard at all. The word in the text literally says that they are innocent, simple, naive. They've just been caught in that snare. And the text of, in 2 Timothy tells us how we go about rescuing them from that trap. Now I'd like to direct your attention to a, uh, a text in 2 Peter 1.16. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known 
unto you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. 2 Peter 1.16 We see that, that word fables used again in, in 1 Timothy 1.4 Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions rather than godly edifying which is in faith. It occurs in 2 Timothy chapter 4, For the time will come when men will not tolerate sound doctrine, but with itching ears they will gather around themselves teachers to suit their own desires, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. We see the word fables again uh, in several other places. I'll quote one more. It's in Titus chapter 1. This testimony is true, therefore re rebuke them sternly so that they will be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Now, the word there in 2 Peter 1.16, cunningly devised fables. The word for, for cunningly devised is, is an interesting word. It's the word sophizo. It's from sophos. It means to render wise in a negative sense, a sinister sense. It means to form sophisms, that is, to continue plausible error. That's in contrast to 2 Timothy chapter 3, where that it states, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation, through faith which is in Christ Jesus. It is human wisdom, folks, apart from Scripture. Fables is the word mythos, myth, a, a speech, a story, a fable, an idle tale, a fanciful story, a false account, yet it poses to, as the truth. It's posing to be the truth. A fabrication which is false and it which subverts it replaces what is actually true it's an invention it's something that is made up and followed is the word it's it actually intensifies uh, the normal word for follow it means to completely follow. A close imitating or emulating someone as a model or a leader. So the thought there is that what Peter is saying is we have not intensely followed error that was made up that poses as the truth. That's what Peter's saying. And this contrasted with the ministry of making known Christ, his power and his coming, in which his majesty was seen. The word majesty meaning his greatness, his magnificence. We did not follow and emulate fabricated lies that contradict scripture which are presented as biblical truth. That's what Peter's saying. Scripture says God chose us in Him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. Ephesians 1.4 Modern Christianity places a condition on that act of sovereign election by grace alone and that this is only true if we first choose Him. Cunningly devised fables. God said that it was by His sovereign will that we are born from above. John 1.13 That we were totally depraved and unable to remedy our lost condition. Modern Christianity says that there remained some degree of goodness in man despite the fall that allowed us to make a decision for Christ and that man in the long run is, is ultimately the one that is sovereign, not God. Therefore, we are born again according to our own will not the will of God, a direct contradiction of Scripture. 
cunningly devised fables. God said that we've been made the righteousness of God in Christ, Romans 5, 19. Man says we must work to make ourselves righteous and keep ourselves righteous, cunningly devised fables. God said that we have been accepted in the beloved, that is, His Son, Jesus Christ. Ephesians 1, 6. Man says that if we do what is right, God will accept us. And sometimes he finds us acceptable and sometimes he does not. Cunningly devised fables. God says that we stand before him spotless and without blame. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight, Colossians 1.22, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish, Ephesians 5.27, yet man believes that being spotless is something that we strive to attain. Cunningly devised fables. Scripture states that the peace that we have with God is based upon what God did in justifying us, that is, making us righteous, not on anything that we did or must do, that God has nothing against us. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, Romans 5, 1. Yet the world religious system that calls itself Christianity believes otherwise. That the peace that we have with God is based on human performance, cunningly devised fables. God says that He never touches our lives. He never touches your life except in love. For whom the Lord loves, He chastens and scourges every son whom He receives. Man says that God disciplines His children in relation to sin. God says that He scourges every son whom He receives, that we are disciplined not in relation to sin, but because we are sons. Hebrews 12, 6. Cunningly devised fables. Scripture says that unless we have died to the law, we cannot bear fruit unto God. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. Romans 7, 4. Yet man believes that a strict adherence to law-keeping as a rule of life is what brings forth fruit unto God. Cunningly, devised fables. God says that He is working in our lives according to His own good will and pleasure, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of Him who worketh all things after the counsel of His own will. Ephesians 1.11 Yet modern Christianity says, that is only true if we choose our own destiny, and when we do, we must make every effort to always be found in His will. Sometimes we will be, sometimes we won't. Cunningly devised fables. Scripture compares the Father working in and through Christ with Christ working in and through our, our lives. He the vine, we the branch. The life that is not I, but Christ. John 15 and Galatians 2. Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. John 14:10. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. John 15, 5. 
I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Galatians 2, 20 and 21. Modern Christianity believes us to be divine and it promotes self rather than Christ and that through law, cunningly devised fables. The very first command given us by God in the epistles is to, to count it as a fact that we are dead to sin but are alive unto God, Romans 6, 11. Modern Christianity would have us believe that that God would have us be constantly engaged in a struggle to overcome the sin nature by means of the flesh, which is the sin nature, which profits nothing. John 6:63, 6, cunningly devised fables. God says that if we are faithless, he remains faithful for he cannot deny himself. 2 Timothy 2.13 Yet the world religious system based on human merit believes that unless we remain faithful, we are not His. Cunningly devised favors. Scripture's primary focus is on righteousness, Christ, grace, the Spirit, Modern Christianity's primary focus and preoccupation is just the opposite. It's on sin, self, law, and the flesh. Cunningly devised fables. Modern Christianity is often fond of saying Christianity is not a religion but a relationship when in reality it actually presents our relationship to God as a religion. Cunningly devised fables. Folks, I've often been accused of not caring about the lost. Well, Steve, if you believe we don't have to do anything, then why preach the gospel? If you believe that God chooses some and rejects others, then why even be concerned about those who are lost? Folks, when I think about the lost, I think about those who are his, his sheep who have gone astray that he finds because he says he'll find everyone who is lost and, and they had to, to have been his for them to be lost in the first place. So I deeply care about those who are entrapped within Satan's snare, who are captured alive by Satan's snare to a world religious system that is based on human merit that preaches a, another gospel that's really not the gospel at all, that doesn't focus on sound doctrine by which we are saved. Oh, Timothy, take heed to doctrine, for in so doing thou shalt deliver thyself and them that hear thee. I love you all. I truly do. Till next time. Thanks for watching.